In June 1998, after General Sani Abacha's death, Lieutenant General Jeremiah Useni was the most senior military officer in the Nigerian army and was normally supposed to take over the reins of power. However, as a close ally and a friend of the late general, Jeremiah Useni's aspirations were thwarted by intense political intrigues and power play. This is the story of General Jeremiah Useni, the last man to see General Sani Abacha alive but felt to succeed him. A story of intrigues and betrayal. Welcome to this edition of His Pool Media. Gabriel here. But first, Jeremiah Timbutu Seni was born on February 16, 1945, in Langtang, North Luku government area of Plateau State, then northern Nigeria. Useni was born into a homo family that valued hard work, discipline, and education. He had his primary education at Langtang, present-day Plateau State from 1950 to 1957. In 1957, at the age of just 14, he enlisted into the Boys' Company Nigerian Regiment of the Nigerian Military School in Zaria. His father was a royal guard and community leader and was one of the most influential officials after the Emir. While his mother was a dedicated homemaker who instilled in her children the virtues of respect and perseverance. As the only child, his father supported his decision to join the army, but his father's friends tried to discourage him from risking the boy. Undaunted by the concerns of his friends, his father allowed him to join the army. At the age of 16 in 1959, Husseini was sent for a course in England under the boys' company battalion. He obtained a senior certificate of education from British Army Apprentices College, Chepstow, England in December 1961. Husseini also attended the Indian Military Academy, Deharadun in India. He also passed the Young Officers Transportation course in England and also obtained a diploma in advanced military transportation in the United States of America. His desire to improve himself saw him attend other important institutions such as Command and Staff College Jaji and the Institute of Policy and Strategic Studies in Kuru, Jos. Useni is a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Management, a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Transport in Nigeria and Britain, as well as a distinguished fellow of the National War College. On his return from London, Useni was posted to the 4th Battalion in Ibadan. When the first military coup of January 1966 happened, he was serving at the 4th Battalion in Ibadan. Jeremiah Timbutu Seni, who was a second lieutenant at this time, rose through the ranks and retired as a lieutenant general in the Nigerian army. During the 1966 July counter coup, Jeremiah Seni was a motor transport officer and played a key role in the arrest of Aguironzi in Ibadan. Meanwhile, at the time of General Sani Abacha's death in 1998, Lieutenant General Jeremiah Useni, who was a very close friend of the general, was the last officer to see General Sani Abacha alive. But we'll come back to that in a moment. But before we continue, kindly take a moment to book the like button on this video and subscribe to Hispo Media if you have not done so already. It will go a long way to help us with the algorithm. Thank you. During his many years of meritorious service in the Nigerian army, Husseini held various military and political appointments before his retirement. He was Director of Supply and Transport, Director of Ordinary Services, and the Quartermaster General of the Nigerian Army. He coordinated the establishment of the, Niger the National War College, now the National Defense College, and became the pioneer commandant of the college. On the political scene, Lieutenant General Jeremiah Hussein served as chairman of the Nigerian Railway Corporation between 1977 and 1978. In January 1984, Hussein was appointed military governor of Bender State, present-day Edo and Delta states. He served in this position until August 1985. Hussein also served as Minister of Transport and Aviation from 1985 to 1988. When General Sani Abacha seized power in 1993, Husseini was appointed Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, the FCT Abuja, a position he held until August 1998. 
While in the FCT, Husseini was appointed chairman of National Traditional Rulers Forum and leaders of Thoth. Husseini received many military decorations as well. In 2011, he was conferred with the national honor of Commander of the Federal Republic, CFRO. As a nationalist, Jeremiah Husseini is bestowed with 12 chieftaincy titles from various parts of the Federation. The most notable is the Sadauna of Plateau and Nasrawa states. For five years, he was the chairman of the Board of Trustees of Ariwa Consultative Forum, a socio-cultural group covering the 19 northern states of Nigeria. In June 1998, when General Sani Abacha died suddenly, Lt. General Jeremiah Hosseini, who was the most senior officer after him, was rumored as his successor. However, this did not happen. But I'll come back to the entries in a moment. Meanwhile, in 2003, Husseini was Deputy National Chairman North for the All Nigerian People's Party, the ANPP. But in May 2006, he left the ANPP to become chairman of a new party, the Democratic People's Party, taking with him some members of the ANPP. Husseini ran for senatorial elections under the umbrella of the People's Democratic Party in 2015 and won. He went on to represent Plateau South in the upper legislative chambers. He also contested the governorship election at Plateau State under the umbrella of the People's Democratic Party in 2019 but lost to the APC candidate Simon Bakola Long. But how did General Jeremiah Hosseini and Abacha became friends? Well, Hosseini and Abacha knew each other since the 1960s. However, immediately after the Civil War, both Hosseini and Abacha were lieutenants in the army. That was when their path officially crossed. It was purely an act of God, Husseini would say later. At that time, Husseini was serving in Ibadan while Abacha was in Kaduna. But when a signal came that people in Kaduna were afraid, the Nigerian army announced the need to swap soldiers of the 4th Battalion in Ibadan with the 3rd Battalion in Kaduna. While Lieutenant Sani Abacha was responsible for the movement of soldiers of the 3rd Battalion down to Ibadan, Lieutenant Jeremiah Hosseini was responsible for the movement of the 4th Battalion to Kaduna. As the 3rd Battalion arrived in Ibadan under Sani Abacha, Hosseini went to receive them at the train station and showed them where to eat and sleep. But Abacha waited at train station to ensure that any train that brought soldiers from Kaduna would ferry those in Ibadan back. This process continued until the soldiers were successfully ferried. Thereafter, Jeremiah Hosseini joined the remaining vehicle back to Kaduna while Abacha was left in Ibadan. That was how the two became friends. Later on, they met again at the 2nd Division in Ibadan. Here, they also met with Garba Duba. Duba was at Asaba with the Amort Division. At this time, their friendship was growing in leaps and bounds. They became so close that people even called them triplet. They went out together any time they met and were even used to sleeping in the same houses. According to Lieutenant General Jeremiah Hosseini, our friendship became so strong that every weekend we visited each other's houses and spent the weekend together. We were going to the houses on turn-by-turn -turn basis up until the time Duba left the army because of an ailment that was disturbing him. When Abacha became commander-in-chief, it was only normal that his long-term friend would be close to him. But as you will see shortly, this friendship would become something that would hold to Seni's ambition much later. Meanwhile, in the evening hours of June 7, 1998, few hours before General Abacha's death, Jeremiah Hosseini was with him in the villa. Hosseini became the last officer to see General Sani Abacha alive. But along the line, their closeness was already a serious concern to the Abacha family. We'll come back to that shortly. Meanwhile, according to Al Mustafa, the sudden collapse of Abacha's health started the previous day after shaking hands with one of the white security officers who accompanied President Yasser Arafat of Palestine in Abuja airport. Al Mustafa had noticed the sudden change in the countenance of the commander-in-chief and reported to the ADC accordingly. 
Later in the evening, by about 6 p.m. of June 7, 1998, his doctor came around and administered an injection to stabilize him. He was advised to have a short rest. Happily enough, by 9 p.m., the head of state was bouncing and receiving visitors until much later when General Jeremiah Useni, the then minister of the Federal Capital Territory, came calling. They stayed and chatted together till around 3.35 a.m. before Hosseini left the president's guest house. But less than two hours later by 5 a.m., Abacha was already gasping for breath. And he died a few minutes later. After Abacha had died suddenly and Lieutenant General Ishaya Bami was quietly informed, he suggested that he should be made the new head of state. This is according to Al Mustafa. However, according to Al Mustafa Steele, they were advised by General Ibrahim Babangida retired to support the most senior officer in the Provisional Ruling Council to become the new head of state. And the most senior officer in the PRC was General Jeremiah Useni. So, what really happened? Why was he not made the head of state? After Abacha's death was confirmed, the most senior officer who would have succeeded him was Lieutenant General Jeremiah Hosseini. General Babangida also allegedly advised them that he should be supported. But before the issue of seniority or hierarchy could be placed on the table, Lieutenant General Ishaya Bahmehi was the first to point out to Al Mustafa, quote, can't you put two and two together to be four? Has it not occurred to you that General Hosseini, who was the last man with the head of state, might have poisoned him, knowing fully well that he was the most senior officer in the PRC? After this was said to Al Mustafa, and as if he has just been given a piece of information that he initially never knew about, Al Mustafa became naturally furious with General Hosseini. This was more so since General Abacha's family had earlier complained severally about the closeness of the two generals, according to Mustafa. At that time, Al Mustafa had made up his mind to storm General Husseini's house with almost a battalion of soldiers to effect his arrest. But again, some heads of security unit and agencies, including his wife, advised against such a move. Husseini became a suspect instead of one to succeed Abacha. If this had ruled out General Husseini, the next most senior officer was General Abdusalami Abubakar. Abubakar was the chief of defense staff and second in command in terms of hierarchy. He was then appointed head of state and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He was sworn in on the 9th of June, 1998. However, in an interview on Arise TV, General Jeremiah Husseini had this to say. I got a call at about 10 a.m. that there was a security council meeting. I said I was not aware. When I went, eventually, the soldiers at the gate did not allow me to enter. I was surprised. Such thing had never happened before. I didn't know at the time that Abacha was there. It was while I was at the gate that another soldier came and asked them to open the gate for me that Abacha was lying dead. He threatened to shoot if they did not open the gate for me. That was how I managed to enter, Husseini continued. When I went in, I saw service chiefs already seated. I was the last person to be informed to attend the meeting. When Husseini was asked why he was not made president after Abacha's death, Husseini had this to say. They did not want me as head of state when Abacha died. The family did not want me and some people brought religion into it. They said, how can Husseini, a Christian, be allowed to succeed Abacha? I was sidelined, but I did not bother. So, do you think the system was fair to Lieutenant General Jeremiah Husseini? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. For more on the intrigues that happened during the last 24 hours of Abacha's life, please click the video displayed somewhere here. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Hispo Media. It will go a long way to help us with the algorithm. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.